This is, um, so this topic is about um, LVM and disk management, right? Um, I have a couple of notes I made for, just for reminder about LVM, right? Um, so basically uh, on this note, it's saying that LVM, which stands for logical volume management, right? It's a tool which, um, LVM is a tool for logical volume management, which includes allocating disk scripts, mirroring, and resizing logical volumes. With LVM, a hard drive is set to, um, a hard drive or set of hard drives is allocated to one or more physical volumes, right? LVM physical volumes can be placed on other black devices, which might span two or more disks, right? So you guys are already Linux um, admins, or at least know Linux, and LVM is a very important um, aspect of Linux or department in Linux that um, it's a lot of disk uh, um, space in space getting full in Linux or this space are getting like large and large or there's no more space on a file system or it could be a different scenario why you will need to understand this topic and how to manage disks that are actually available on your Linux uh, system, right? So we're gonna go over those. So the first thing I wanna show is a, is a picture of what actually happens from your, your, your Linux system is basically introduced to a storage device all the way to you turning that storage device into a file system, right? So the first step is that physical hard drive or that storage device being introduced to your Linux uh, um, um, device, right? Your Linux um, box. After that, you will turn that physical um, hard drive into something called a physical volume, right? You turn your storage device into a physical volume, and from that physical volume, you could turn it into something called a volume group, right? And a volume group could basically, it's like you could partition a volume group to, to supply multiple logical volumes, right? And those, those, those logical volumes, you could turn actually into a file system, okay? Um, so the, there are a couple of commands for you to check first on a Linux system for all your available um, um, block devices that are available on your system. The first command I'm gonna show you guys today is LSBLK, right? So first, let's see what LSBLK mean. I'll use my what is command, LSBLK. And LSBLK just mean it list block devices, right? Means you're, just like we saw on the picture, our storage device, our block devices, LSBLK will help us um, list these devices, okay? Um, so, let me go back to my, my terminal. So as you can see, when you, when, if you run the LSBLK command, it will list all the, the black devices that are available currently on my on my on this device I'm on. Right? We all know SDA basically um, went to our root file system, right? For boot slash and swap. So SDA has been dedicated. SDA had 25 gig, which is the original disk I gave the system when I was building it. Now, as you can see, I have a disk called SDB which has eight gigabyte of disk. So the first thing I wanna show actually is how you can actually add a physical disk because I'm using um, VirtualBox to manage my VMs. It's how you could actually um, add a physical storage device, how you could add it to your Linux box on VirtualBox. Now on VMware, you could do it while the while the, the server is running and you could do something called thin provision, right? Or thick provisioning, it depends. But for, for VirtualBox, you have to, the, 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 the computer has to be off. The Linux box has to be off for that, uh, um, for, for you to be able to add new storage um, device to, the, um, to the, the Linux box, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and add a new disk so if you guys are using VirtualBox, just follow these steps. Actually, I can't even remember now. It's definitely not you. Let me turn it 
‫אפשר לשנות. Try to get the right VM to turn off and add to. And the reason why we want to add a new disk, because let's say there's a scenario where you are asked at work saying, um, we run out of space, you do LSB okay, there are no available block devices, you will want to know how to add it onto the, your system. Now, this is virtual box. Like I said, you could be using um, another type of um, uh, um, platform, AWS, or you could be using um, VMware or virtual box, because I know some jobs that actually you know, for maybe their test box is actually virtual box. And so it's, it's up to you which one you're using at work. You want to know how to add this space to your system. So let me see if it is in the system I'm on. I know I, I, I built a couple of NICs, couple of virtual NICs on this device. So, okay, so definitely not that one either. So if I can turn this one off. It's this one. So first you power off your machine, um, you go to settings, go to storage, you go to where it says control SATA, and you go to this last plus button right here, and you want to create a new disk. Now, if you notice on my, when I did LSBLK on this machine, it says I have something called um, SD, right? It says I have SDB. So if I add another disk now, this is SDB currently on, the, on my server. If I add another disk by naming convention, it will be called SDC. So I go ahead and add this space and it asks you, you know, what size you want it to be. And I, I want it to, I'll go to default eight gig. Sorry, it's because there's a disk name like that also. So I've added it and I say, okay, now I'm gonna power on again this machine. Where's that two terabyte coming from? Can you talk to them about that? Um, the two terabyte, um, hold on, let me go back to menu I let go. Which, which two terabyte uh, is off now? She was off. You were adding a new um, disk and then uh, basically the, two, the, the amount that you were adding is coming from somewhere. So we're, Where's that size? You see the total right there is two TB. So where is that? Right. Yeah. That is actually coming from the host machine. Okay. Right. So you basically, because this is a virtual machine and it's a type two hypervisor, you're getting basically all your resources from this host machine. So that's where we're getting this eight gig from. It's actually from my, from the hardware that um, my virtual box is actually sitting on right now. Okay. So from mm -hmm. here, for, for mm -hmm. this one, we, you're grabbing this from your local laptop and it's giving you your disk space. So in right. some, in an enterprise environment where you're grabbing it from, let's say VMware that is on a, you know, actual enterprise instance. Right. Um, can you, well, we don't have to talk about it now. I just want to ask questions. I know that others may probably ask when we're going through right. this. So let, let me explain that. So in, in, in say like VMware, they, they have st something they call data stores. Mm -hmm. These data stores are, have, um, this that the maybe the storage team has actually physically uh, get storage from a physical hard drive they'll they'll partition it in something called lawns yeah. and they'll introduce this lawns i think that's the right word introduce it to the data store and from that data store is where you will actually be getting the storage space from if this was like vmware right so the data store is where you pick what data store you want to get it from and you, you pick the amount that you want from that data store. As long as the data store is associated with the cluster or that particular VM, you'll be able to get your, your site, your, your um, storage space from that data store. Yeah, good stuff. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, we, uh, we used to use a uh, lens. Uh, we had a scan storage and we used to uh, basically point our indexers to there and then they were individually um, allocated to specific lens. All right. 
and I think the, the, the term they use is they carve it or something like that. Okay. But where I work right now, this that's their job to basically um, make sure we, um, if we need any storage space dedicated to a particular uh, um, club or, or, or ESXi host, it's their job to, to basically make that happen. Yeah. Right, so system in panic mode. I'm not giving them sorry. Sorry, my system went into something called um emergency mode. That's for another class. I don't want to waste time, so I'm just gonna add my disk on another VM that I have. Same eight gig, change the name to maybe that and add it there and i'm going to start it up right so that's for another class one day um if this class keep going like this i'll explain how to get out of something called maintenance mode or emergency mode it's, it's it has to do with something with my um with fs tab if you put um the wrong information sometimes most of the time if you if your fs tab is corrupted you will, it will it will it will not boot up the right way. It will push your system into something called maintenance or emergency mode. So let me go ahead and while we're waiting for that one to come up, I'm gonna just go ahead and add more space on some other devices I have. So once once you once you introduce your 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 um once you introduce your, your space or the, the, the hard drive or the block device to your Linux box, you just, um, like I say, for other, for other VMs, for, for VMware, you could do thin provision. You could do it on the fly. But boxes like uh, um, platforms like VirtualBox that we are using, you can't do it on the fly. So you have to basically um, turn up the machine, which is, you know, it will be inconvenient to add space. What if the customer needs space added during work hours? That would be inconvenient to the customer. So you might need to, you know, at work, most likely you will use some in, in AWS also, you don't need to um, turn off your, your, your VM, but in VirtualBox, apparently you need to turn off your VM. So that's why. But, so once once you find once you allocate the space to the VM, you will go back again and run the same lsblk command to see the size that the new the new disk the new block device that you are actually um, add to the or allocate to this machine is actually there and it has the right size, and it has a naming convention. Now, like this box, they will have SDA SDB. Some some Linux system will have some other naming convention, but it will usually name it, um, I'll say alphabetically, you know, in the alphabetical order. Uh, this box is, my IP is 183. Right, so 10. And it's always advisable in, in, in Linux to not log in on your console, through the console. It's always advisable to log in through some type of remote login, you know, for security reasons, because if you go to the console and you make certain mistakes, um, yes, you'll be in big trouble. What if you accidentally um, turn off a machine? Because I know people that have done something like that by accident. So I usually advise always use some remote login, which I'm using PuTTY to SSH into my device. So now if I do LSBLK for my block devices, I actually have on this device, I have a disk SDB because we know SDA already went to the root device, SDB, SDC, and SDD, okay? So at this point, we could decide which one of these disks we wanna actually create a new logical volume from, okay? So we're gonna create a new logical volume first. And the command to create a new logical volume to, to the process, because I showed you guys on the, on the, on the diagram that 
this is my storage device. So that SDB is basically on this level. For it to, the next level will be to create a physical volume, then a volume group, then a logical volume, then a file system out of that. That's the order it has to go, right? So LSVLK, or you could do PV, um, um, no, LSBLK is fine. I don't even want to convince. I like LSBLK because it, it, it could hey, um, Sam, if I could um, interrupt just for mm -hmm. two seconds. You you mentioned, you said SDA is um, goes automatically goes to the root device, right? Mm -hmm. So SDB, SDC, are they more of um, what, backups, storage devices? No, they're not. I would, I would grab them. They're just another, another. Um, they're just a, a, a block devices. They're just other, like what you would call hard drive and okay. on the Linux system, right? So these are just block devices there. You could turn them to a file system. You could create LVM out of them. You could actually um, partition this disk. They're just block devices that are there. As you could see, okay. this information when you do LSBLK, it tells you the name of your block device, right? It tells you, I guess this is how long ago I did anything on it, right? And it tells you the size. We got all of these guys are eight gigs, right? And what type it is. If you notice, my SDA has been partitioned, right? It's partitioned oh. and, and it's mounted on boots. That's the mount point. I'll explain what mount points are. There's another uh, um, slice of it, another partition of it that's been mounted to slash. And you could see the size that the mount point has, right? One gig went to the boot partition. The boot uh, mount point, 23.1 gig went to slash, which is our root file system, and two gig was meant for swap. So we can't do anything about that. So we just have to start fresh, right? So now that we've identified that SDB is the disk that we're actually going to use um, to create our new logical volume and eventually turn into a file system. And with the diagram that I showed you, that this is what SDB is right now. We want to get it to this level, this level, and this level, and all the way up here, right? So the first thing I'll do is run PV, PVS first. PVS shows you physical volumes that you have, right? So if you do what is PVS, what is this a command that I usually like? It's like a short uh, um, description of a command in Linux, right? What is PVS? It tells you display information about physical volumes, right? So with that said, if I do PVS, it shows me all my physical volume that I have. And as you can see, I only have that SDA that the system created. We didn't create this, this physical volume. This is where our Linux system is running on, right? This 25 gig SDA, whatever, right? We're not touching that. We, we want to partition we want to create a logical volume out of SDB. So the first step will be to run the PV create command, right? So you do PV create, the syntax is PV create slash dev and the name of the disk. In this case, we want to turn SDB into a physical volume because right now when I do LSBLK, we see that it is, a, it, it is just a disk, right? It's not a physical volume. So the goal is to turn it into a physical volume. So I do PV create on slash dev SDB. And when I, if I hit enter, it will tell me it was successfully created. Don't worry about that message. Right, you see that? It's a physical volume dev SDB successfully created. That's the, that's the answer you will get, right? And then so, again, according to our diagram, the next, after physical volume, the next step is volume group. It's a creative volume group, right? And so now if I do PVS, you will actually see my SDB now is there as my physical volume and the size is eight gig, right? It has eight gig free. The next thing that you want to do is do VGS. That's the command to see all your volume groups, right? If you do VGS, you will see that we still only have our CentOS volume group, which has one physical volume that's supplying it and it has two logical volumes from it. And it gives you the size and how much it has free, right? So we're going to create our own volume group. And the command to create a volume group is VG create. So you do VG create. The syntax is VG create. The name of the volume group, then you tell it what physical volume are you actually getting the, the space that you're trying to create this volume group from, OK? We're going to call our volume group Linux, L-I-N-U-X, OK? 
and then we get in our space from dev sdb right so we're saying create a volume group with the vg create command call it linux and it's going to say where you get in this space that you're trying to create this linux volume group from and we're going to tell you we want it from this um um physical volume that we created earlier right called dev sdb and it says yes your volume group called linux has been successfully created to confirm that you could run your vgs command so pvs is to see physical volumes vgs is to see volume groups okay and you can see that our volume group is here it has one physical volume it has no logical volume right now and it has eight gigs in size and it also has eight gig free okay hey sam can you run lsblk again if i run lsblk Dates. Say it again. No, no. It, this one changed because it's still a disk. It's just right. a just a we just we just moving creating volume group and physical volume. It's still a disk. Right, right. Until you create the logical volume, that's when right. this information will change. Change, right? Uh, yeah, I'm tracking. I'm tracking. Right. So now, if I if you want to see your logical volume, also you do LVS, right? You will see all your logical volumes. Or the command that I like to use is LV display, because LV display will show you the LV path of your of your of your devices, right? Which that LV path is what I usually turn, what you usually turn into a file system. So now we, we we've created our physical volume, created our volume group. Now we're going to create our logical volume, right? And the command is LV create. So the syntax is LV create minus n is to name the logical volume that you're trying to create, right? In this case, we're going to call it class. Let's say we want our, our, our logical volume to be called class, right? And the same thing now, with this, you have to give it a size. Remember, our, we, we, if we want to create this, this logical volume from a volume group that has 8 gig, which is our SDB, right? The size of that SDB is what? 8 gig, right? So now, we're going to tell you what size of what size out of that 8 gig how much are we trying to take out of the 8 gig to create this logical volume called class okay so the syntax is minus capital l you you, you want to use the plus sign right and then let's say i want it to be 5 gigabyte just like this right space and then you got it now you have to tell you what volume group you get in this 5 gigabyte form and we know our volume group that we get in five gigabyte form is called Linux. So again, LV create minus N to name your logical volume, the size that you want your logical volume to be, and what volume group are you basically allocating this five gigabyte that, that you're creating class out of. If you hit enter, don't worry about that. It's just, it's because I had done something on it before. But you see that? It says our logical volume class has been created, okay? And if we do the same LV display command that I ran earlier, let me less it, type in less. We will see our LV path, right? Our LV path will be dev Linux for the for the volume group and class for the for the for the logical volume. But this is our LV path. And it tells you the, the logical volume name, it gives you the information here is class and the volume group name that is getting its 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 um, space from is called Linux. And it gives you some other information. Okay. So now that we have our LV path, we've created our logical volume. Okay. Now we want to create a file system out of that logical volume we just created okay and the syntax to create a file system or to make a file system the command is mkfs so it's two ways so that i know there might be more but there's two popular ways that you could create a, or you could make a file system so first you have to decide what type of file system do you want by default red hat 7 and, and centos 7 which we are on the file system by default is xfs but Linux have exe3, ext4, you know, you could create all those file systems, right? I'm going to say I want to create an, an ext4 file system out of this. So there are two ways to do it. I could do mkfs.ext4 like this, or I could do mkfs space minus t for the type, and I could do ext4. So either way they work for you, fine. I'm going to do the first one that I said, mkfs minus, sorry, that 
EXT4, right? Space. Then what are we turning into a file system? Our LV path, which is Dev Linux class. Okay, we're gonna make a file system type of EXT4 out of this LV path. Okay, I hit enter, it will say done. You know your file system basically has been successfully created, right? This Dev Linux class has been created. So so see all your file systems that are mounted on your Linux system. The command is df minus h for human readable. This will show us all our file systems that are mounted on this Linux system by default, right? But we've created a file system, but we haven't mounted it yet. So in order for you to mount a file system, the first thing you want to do is create something called a mount point. A mount point is just a directory, but you have to name the directory with a slash in front of it. That's the syntax. So, the hey, yes. so can you do the uh, LSB okay one more time? LSO okay, sorry. LSB okay. You see that our SDB, yep. you can see that it's been partitioned into this Linux class, which is Linux is the is the volume group and class is the logical volume. And if you see the disk type, it will say LVM now instead of saying disk again. Sweet, nice. Right. So uh, where was I? File system, right? So we've created our file system with the MKFS EXT, the type of file system of this. But now we need, to, we need to mount our file system because when we ran our DF minus H, we see that our file system has not been mounted because we haven't mounted the file system yet. So the first thing you want to do, like I said, you create a mount point. And the command, a mount point, again, is just a directory that you will make, that you will mount that file system on. And so we know the command to create uh, to make a directory is mkdir, and we could call this. You could call your file system, uh, your mount point, anything you want to call it. We're going to call it um, um, sal, short for Sierra Leone. Okay, this is um this is our directory. Our mount point is called sal. So now the syntax now to mount your file system on a mount point is you run the mount command is the name of the file system. In this case, our file system is what? Because remember we turned slash dev Linux class into a file system, right? And we're gonna mount it on slash, sorry, um, sal, right? The directory sal. So mount is the command to mount. What are you mounting? This file system, because we've already turned this into a file system and we're gonna mount it on sal. We hit enter. Now, if I run my df minus h command, you will see that sal has been mounted. And it gives me the size and um, how much has been used, how much is still available, the percentage that has been used, and the mount points, which it says mounted on, right? And this is the file system itself. Okay? Quick question. Mm -hmm. I, I never get this. What is it that Linux always takes away, that percentage? What's the small? What is it that it that it uses that percentage for? Um, it's it's reserved for something in the system. I really I really can't recall right now. But you're right because we gave this five gig. But if you notice, it would take it will use like it use like twenty megabyte. It's, it it reserved that space for something in the system which I can't recall right now. But I know I I always had that question too. Like why always takes away a little bit? But there's something in reserve. I can't remember the why reserve or what is reserving it for but i know it, it, it takes a little space every time you create a logical volume or mount uh, you mount a, a, a file system there'll be um some part of that file system reserved for us what's the swap space for that do we know say it again what's the swap space for that what's the swap space for this system that i'm on uh for the dev map i'm wondering if it's the swap um, no it won't be for i don't think it's for swap Okay. If I do three minus H. So my swap is still two gig for the system, but I, I don't think it's for the swap for of this file system. It could be. I haven't I haven't I know I, I used to know this word. It's not it's not in my head much. But yeah, that's a good point. I'll 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 make note of that. So now we know we mounted our, our file system, right? DF minus H. We could see our file system mounted. But if we reboot this system now, this file system will not be mounted anymore. You will have to 
every time you reboot the system, you have to mount this, you have to run this command again all the time, right? And it's crazy. So you don't want to do that. So the next thing that you want to do is you could actually run like this. You could you could actually do this or so let me show you the, the options that you have. So you have to go ahead and mount and put the information of your file system in a file called fstab, the fstab file to make it persist on reboot. So when the system reboots, that file system will still be mounted. So there are two ways, there are two things that you could grab. So if I, if you run the blkid um, command, it will show you your block ID of your file system. In this case, our uh, dev mapper Linux class is, has this UUID. You could grab this and, and put that information in FSTAB, or you could put this information in FSTAB. Either one will work. Okay. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to put this information. I'm going to go into the, into our um, FSTAB, which is a file. I want to, I want to edit that file. And I'm going to use my, 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 my edit, my editor that I have on this system, which is VI. You could, you might be using nano, of Vim, that's fine also. And the location of that file is in, in C slash Etsy and it's called FSTAB. I'm gonna go ahead and put that information in here. So if you notice on FSTAB, you put the file system here first, you tab, then you go ahead and put, um, where's that file system mounted? Sa slash sal, you tab again. And what kind of file system is this file system that you, you mount in, in, in FSTAB, ext4? We tab again. And you do default tab, zero space zero. That's the syntax. This, this zero space zero is just how the, when your system is coming up, you're letting it know the preference of what it should check first. When you say zero, it will just go ahead and check it as it is. But if you put this higher, preference, it will check this file system first before it check this one, because the system does that before it boot up. And if you don't put the right information in FSTAB, that's exactly what sent my other machine into uh, maintenance or emergency mode most of the time. And after that, you put your information, your file system, the mount points, the file system um, type, which is ext4, you go with the default, then you want to save. You hey, Sam, point. another question. What if you do a space instead of a tab? Um, it, I've done that, and that's exactly will will send your 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 system when you when you reboot your system, it will send it into into maintenance mode. Sweet. Because that's the syntax that FS tab. You know, most of these configuration files, they they they're basically um, have a syntax that you have to put certain information in, right? If you you have some configuration files where certain things have to be in capital and some have to be in lowercase, like your network configuration files. So if you basically put put the put the information in a, in a wrong syntax, it will it, the system will not know how to read it. And this is one of those files that will send your system when you reboot your system, it will send it into maintenance or emergency mode so you could fix it. And if it's a network that if you were if you were configuring a network file and you put the wrong syntax in there. It will if you restart your network, it will not restart. It will send it will also let you know that the network is not is not configured right. So that's just how most of these configuration files in Linux are they're very sensitive. So I go ahead and do um escape shift colon and then I do X to save my 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 uh, file. And I usually just run to check that your stuff is mounted right in FSTAB, you want to run. Ma sorry, mount minus A. If you run mount minus A and it, 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 it shows you nothing, no error, then you know you're fine. Because if you mount something wrong in FS tab, usually when you do mount minus A, mount minus A will let you know the syntax or something is wrong with your file system that is mounted and, and, and the syntax in FS tab. Okay? So, I'm not gonna lie, this class, uh, um, so we probably, not probably, we have to break it down into another class again, another day, because 
this is just file system. I wanted to also teach how to actually partition a disk, but I usually like to teach this first before we partition the disk so you don't confuse people why we partition any disk in the first place without knowing how this disk work. Yeah. So this is just logical volume, right? Next class will be how to actually use the F disk utility to actually partition the disk. Because if you guys notice, when I did LSBLK, right, I have eight gig of SDB. But what if your clients don't want you to use all that eight gig for physical volume, right? They only want four gig out of it. So the next class will be when I will show you guys how to use the F disk utility to actually partition this SDB and, and able to get the amount of space or this and partition it to the amount of this space that you want to extract out of that eight gig that you could actually turn into physical volume while there will be four more gig. If it's an eight gig uh, disk, four more gig available. And sorry, if you also notice now that we've mounted our, our, our file system on, on slash sal, you see that when I do LSBLK, it lets me know that slash sal is actually mounted on on uh, um, this file system is actually mounted on slash cell. Yeah, no, I agree. I think uh, there's definitely a next class that's needed uh, yeah. for follow up. So we'll probably do a part two. I know next class I think was supposed to be uh, what do you call it? Uh, smart store, um, but we'll see. I may do the smart store and then we do the follow up week. Um, okay. But we'll, we'll work that out some some way. Right. Yeah. But this is good, man. I like this. This uh, this is straight to the point nitty-gritty um you answered you know uh questions um so i don't know if any one of these guys had other questions in here anybody have uh, uh, questions so but um how much time do we have left sir uh we've got about another five minutes five minutes um because i wanted to show how to actually get back because we could, we, you could delete all this stuff, everything that we created, we could actually delete it in reverse and actually get back our SDB. Being an LVM, it would be just a disk again with eight gig. I could do that real fast. Sure, let's do that. Okay, so, so now that we have done this, we know we have our file system mounted. So in order for us to do that, DF minus H, right? So first thing, you know, we mounted um, this file system on slash style, right? So we, first thing you want to do to get back to, to, to delete your logical volume, you want to unmount. So the command is you mount slash style, right? We're going to unmount it first. So if I do DF minus H, now you see that it's no longer mounted, right? Now we could actually delete our, logic, our logical volume. And the command to remove or delete the logical volume is LV, LV remove, which is slash, uh, what's it, Linux class, right? Just like that, LV remove Linux class. They ask you if you're sure you want to delete it, you say yes, it's gone. You see that? Logical volume class successfully removed, right? That's to remove a logical volume. But remember, we still have our volume call class called Linux, right? Now we want to also delete Linux. So the command to remove a volume group is VG remove the name of your volume group, which is in this case, it's Linux, right? And it tells me um, volume group Linux has been successfully removed. If I do VGS, you see, sorry, if I do VGS, you see that Linux is no longer there. But if I do PVS, we still have our SD, dev SDB. And then also to remove that dev SDB, the command is PV remove slash dev SDB. So another question then. Mm -hmm. If you try to remove these out of order, what happens? Uh, it, it won't work. Okay. Right. Because if, if, if the file system is mounted, and you're trying to remove the logical volume, it will tell you that it's, it's, it's busy or it gives you some type of error letting you know there's something else mounted on it that's not letting it. And if you try to remove a physical volume when that has a volume group of a logical volume and a file system mounted on it, it will, it will give you the same error. So you have to do, do it in reverse the same way you, you know, in just the reverse. You mount it. Mounting it was the last thing you did, so you have to unmount it. That's the first thing, then logical volume, then volume group, then the physical volume. Is there right. a need to force it? Um, yes. So sometimes there's some disks that are corrupted that are not acting right. I actually did a change like that a um, couple of, like last week, Friday. 
and I had to, there's a dash dash force that you could actually um, add to, to remove it. But make sure you take snapshot because if you mess up some of this, this logical volume or you didn't wipe up the data off that, that mount points and stuff, it could corrupt your, your whole system. So it's, it's something that you have to make sure it's a very sensitive um, part of Linux because you know it's dealing with this. And if you if you corrupt the wrong thing, then yeah, make sure you have a snapshot. So at least that that VM is actually um, backed up somewhere. If something happened, you guys could always revert. Right, but there's a there's why right, there's a way because sometimes you will try to remove in some of these volume group or this logical volume and it's not removing. So you could add the dash dash force to it and it will force it to remove it. And now if you notice, if I do my PVS, I no longer have that physical volume SDB. And if I do LSBLK now, you see that we have back our SDB with no, no, no partition to it. And it has eight gig and it's now a disk again. So that's how you will basically remove a logical volume, volume group and a physical volume. Great job, man. This is really good. Good job. And ne next class, I will also show how to extend it. That's something I didn't do either. So I'll show how to extend it. So let's say a, a, a mount point, a file system is getting full. You know, you want to extend that. There's a way to do it. So I'll also teach that next class, how to actually create a new physical volume and extend the volume group and extend the logical volume and then resize the file system. So it has the, the, the space that's needed. Okay, any questions? Alaji, Deepal, Daniel, no? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Cool. Okay. I do have the recording, so I'll pass the recording on if, uh, if you need as well. All right, guys, so if you have any questions, reach out to me. All of you guys that, that's on the Zoom have my information. But definitely next class, I'm going to go ahead and show because extending a file system is something that you will do much more than actually deleting a, a, a file system and a logical volume. Because most of the time, if you do DF minus H, you will see that this, this file system has um, what's available, right? So for example, slash dev is 480. And if, it's, if, if that space allocated to it is too small for whatever um, you guys are doing in your environment, you will need this to be extended. So that's a very 99% of the time you are extending file systems that actually removing them and deleting them. So that's a very important um, aspect into logical volume. And this is why logical volume is, is great because you could actually extend these file systems without the client known, without say turning off the system to add space to that file system right and that's that's a great aspect into 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 file systems and just in case you're wondering what a file system is really it's just like windows how you have c drive z drive right so in linux we don't have c drive z drive file system is really what our z drive and c drive and stuff like that are equivalent to in linux okay so definitely next class, we will learn how to, how to extend a volume group, extend a logical volume and actually resize um, a file system. And you will see that this size will actually grow after I do the, run the commands. And then we could partition the disk to basically show you how to do partition. Okay? Great job, Sam. All right, guys. Hi, sir. So if you guys have any questions, reach out to me. But thank you very much for coming. Thanks again, Sam. Really appreciate it. Thanks.